Rhymebill is now online. Hey guys and girls, I'm going to show you how to make a real-time chat website and publish it to Netlify using Firebase. Let's go. All right, so here's a sneak peek at what we're going to make. On the left, I got meme chat and on the right, I got meme chat. So there's a round two version of what I made initially with Node, but this is a way easier version and it looks better. All right, so let's actually test this out. So here on the left, I'm Patty Cake, and on the right, I'm Jim. And I'm gonna type in something as Patty Cake, and you're gonna see it appear almost at the same time on Jim's screen. All right, and that's pretty cool. Let's respond. So this is Firebase. Firebase looks great. And we're gonna use this as our real-time database. Now once you sign in, you want to hit go to console. Once you're in console, you're going to see a plus sign, which just means new project. Click on that. So now I was going to ask you for a project name. I'm just going to call it meme chat too. All right. So once our project is done loading, all we got to do is to create a web app. We do this by hitting the web icon. And now all we got to do is to name our web app. I'm just going to name it meme chat too, just like I did with the project. All right. So now it gives us a piece of the code, which we're going to use later on. But for now, we're actually just going to skip it so we can do other things. So now I'm going to minimize Google Chrome and I'm going to open our file explorer. The reason why I'm opening up file explorer is so we can create a folder for our meme chat website. You're going to need this if you're planning on publishing it to Netlify. So now call it meme chat 2.0. Now I'm opening up an IDE. An IDE could just be Atom, Sublime Text, Visual Studio, Notepad, whatever. But I'm using Atom. Atom is the best. So in Atom, I'm simply going to open up a folder. And guess this folder is going to be the same folder we just created. This step might look different for you depending on which IDE you're using. But to put it simply, we're just going to create three files. And these files are going to be called index.html, index.javascript, which is JS, and index.css, which is our style sheet. And of course, you're going to know if you did it right when you open your file explorer, go to your meme chat folder, and all of a sudden you see three files in there, which just happen to be HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Awesome. So now we're going to visit this site called rhymebill.netlify.com. This is where we're going to get the source code for the meme chat. There's way too many lines of code to just do in one tutorial, so here we go. Alright, let's start off by getting the HTML code for the meme chat. Alright, so you want to make sure you copy the HTML code into your index.html. Makes sense, right? So in our HTML file, we got some simple HTML tags here. We got a head tag, and this head tag contains everything. We have our Google fonts, which aren't really necessary, but they make the CSS look awesome. And then we got font awesome, which is for icons. You must have your Firebase app and database references. This is how we're going to connect to Firebase database. Below all of this, you must have your index.js and your index.css. Now, if you didn't name it index.js or index.css, just make sure you change the name just to keep everything consistent. And also if you don't, it's not going to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just as we did before, let's go ahead and grab the CSS portion of the code. Now paste it into your index.css. When we refresh our page, we see nothing really changes apart from the background color. But yeah, that's it. All right, so here we go, grabbing our JS file or JS code. Now we're just going to paste it into our index.js. And bravo, you did it. Well, not quite. There's still a couple of things we need to do before it actually works. Okay, so now I'm going to collapse everything just to make it look neater. And the first thing we're going to do here is to initialize our Firebase. As you can see here, I deleted my config just to, <laughs> just 
just so you guys don't write into my database but yours so let's go ahead and grab that code we skipped out early on all you need to do is to click the settings icon go to project settings and down here we just need to scroll down until we see our code now let's just copy what we need and paste it in our javascript file Now the next thing on our agenda is to set up our real-time database. To do this, we're gonna click the real-time database icon and then we're gonna hit create. And now here, we're just gonna hit okay. And now you wanna make sure you're in text. It's gonna allow you to read and write into your database, which is probably the most important thing you need. All right, so once you got that set up, you should be fine. We're gonna make sure we code this as simply as possible. So what I did was I created a class. So we're gonna be using object-oriented programming, whatever that means. So the first function we have is a home function and this home function just creates the home page. Following that, we have a chat function. And just like the home function, this also creates the chat page. <laughs> okay, so in our create title function, what we have here is some HTML tags, but they're written in JavaScript style. So I'm gonna skip over these. The most important thing to know here is that our title is meme chat 2.0 and we're appending it to the body. All right, so our create join form is simply just the input box and a button, which we saw earlier on. And again, these are just HTML tags, but in JavaScript format, our max length is 15 on the join input. This means that you can't have someone just typing a bunch of rubbish in there with like a thousand characters. And secondly, we have our on key up function. This is pretty much just for CSS looks. When we're typing into our input box, all of a sudden our join button lights up. It turns red. This is because in our code, when we get our key up, so when a keyboard presses down and it goes back up, then we check to see if something is written in an input box. If something's written in an input box, then we simply highlight the button. All right, so when our join button is clicked, all we gotta do is to save our name to the local storage. And then we delete our join container, which removes our input box and the button. And then we have parent.createChat. This basically creates the chat as you guys saw earlier on. And it's important to note that this is called parent, not this, because parent is describing the meme chat object. But if you just said this.createChat, that's actually referencing the button, which will throw an error if we do that. So we wanna make sure this has parents instead of just this and this is this is very complicated if you're not familiar with the terminology and how this actually works okay so moving on here we have this function called create load Create load is a pretty cool function. All it does is it creates a spinny loading circle as we wait for our data to arrive. Next function up here is create chat. The first thing we do in create chat is to make the title container smaller in height. And it does a really cool and smooth animation, which looks really nice with the website. Similar to what we did in our join function, we have our input box with a max length and also we disable the send button until we have input in our input box. And this looks really cool. It's a really cool feature to have. First thing we do whenever we click our send button is to check if there's actually something to send. The next thing we do, we create a loading circle in our chat so that way the user knows that something's going on. Something cool I thought to add was a logout button. Although you don't really need this, it's pretty cool because it allows you to log out what actually happens is it just clears our local storage. Cause remember, we're only saving our name to our local storage. And this is how it looks when we do it. Oh, I should also mention the user can change their name using local storage. So don't ever save anything important in local storage cause the user can just change it. The next things we do is to create a loading circle and then we refresh the chat. 
Refreshing the chat just gets the data from Firebase database. All right, and a save name function is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna save our name to our local storage database. As we can see here, it saves it as name and then our name value. And when we check local storage, we can see this because we see our key is name and our value is the name value we enter. Okay, so our send message function takes it a parameter message which we pass in when we hit the send button. Now, a couple of things we do in our send message function, we first check if our name is equal to null. And secondly, we check if our message is equal to null. And then lastly, we simply send this off to Firebase. So we're using a DB variable, which we declared up above as Firebase database. We can save our message in our chats directory. Okay, so in our function, there are a couple of things that are very important. What I found was you must have an index for a message. This is gonna help us later on organize the message and sequence. So your index is equal to the length of the messages plus one, which makes sense because we're adding a new message. And then we wanna simply set our message and we wanna pass in our index name and then our message. And those are the three things we're actually saving to our Firebase database. All right, so after sending this off to Firebase, we simply wanna refresh our chat to get the new messages. Our get name function is pretty important. In our get name function, we first check if our local storage.get name property is equal to null. If it's not equal to null, then we can simply return the value of our name. Else, if it is equal to null, as in if there is no name, we simply wanna go back to our homepage so the user can sign in. Then we return null for no name. Okay, so now the most important thing of all, our refresh chat function. First thing we do in this function is we declare a variable, which is our chat content container, because this is gonna contain all our messages. And now once we got that all set up, then we simply go to Firebase and get the data. It's very important that this says dot on and not dot once which is what we did before. This is how you get that real time by using dot on. And after we get our data, we simply wanna clear the chat container. Following that, we wanna make sure that we have some data to work with. So we check Firebase, the data it sent us to see if it actually has messages in them. And if there are no messages, then we simply return and we don't show any messages. Okay, so if you're a bit new to programming, yeah, <laughs> if you're new to programming, this is gonna be a blur. So let me explain what's actually going on here. When we get our messages from Firebase, it doesn't put it in order of how it was sent. What we do here, we simply organize the chat from first sent to most recent set. And that's what this code here does. Now I'm actually gonna explain what objects of value is, because that's kind of a new term. All right, so in order to explain what objects.values does, I'm gonna have to show you an example. So we're gonna create a simple object, doesn't matter what it is, and inside this object, we're gonna have a name property, call it whatever. And now I'm simply gonna console.log this object, and it's just gonna return itself, which is name Bob, simple. So now when we say objects.values, what this actually does is it looks at our object and it says, give me all your values. So what it's gonna do is just convert this object to an array, but this array is gonna be filled with the values, which is why it's called object.values. It's gonna take the values of the object and slap it into an array. And this is how we're gonna get our messages. And I'm gonna be straight up honest with you guys. The rest of this part here where I push it into a guide and unordered, and then I sort the unordered and make it ordered, that's just straight up stack overflow. I'm, I'm not even gonna cap, that's straight up off. <laughs> okay, that's just straight off stack overflow. So yeah, I guess we're kind of the same boat for this one. But with the magic of code, it organizes all our messages <laughs> and voila. That's exactly what happens. And then down below, we simply create all our messages. Also, and in this for each statement, we're passing in data. Think of data as I in a for loop. So basically you can call it whatever you want. I just named it data so it looks nicer, but I feel like this is sort of intimidating to the newer viewers or people who are new to coding. So you can name it whatever you want if you feel comfortable with that. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if it actually works.
and voila it actually does you can see the message there not only that when you go to firebase and check your real-time database you see the message appended onto your chats and you see with an index of one because there's only one message which is really cool it just proves that this actually works okay that's awesome And the last thing we do after appending all our messages, we always want to scroll to the very bottom to get the recent chats. And that's what this piece of code does. And that is basically it. <laughs> and now all we got to do is to call our class function or object. We just got to create it. So now we say var app is equal to new meme chat. And that's it. Now you got a working meme chat, which is pretty cool. But now we're actually going to upload it to Netlify so you can send a link to your friends and you can chat with them for real this time. Anyway, so um, yeah, let's keep on going, guys. All right, so you guys remember the folder we created early on, Meme Chat 2.0? You actually want to open that up because we're going to drag and drop it into Netlify. Simple as that. All right, so if you're new to Netlify, go ahead and sign up. It's completely free. But once you get your account, you want to go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, you simply want to open up your explorer page and drag and drop your meme chat 2.0 onto the big box over there which is going to upload your <laughs> website to the web it's really that easy and of course the first thing everybody wants to do you obviously want to customize your url so go ahead and hit site settings and once you scroll down you'll be able to see an option which says change your site name and you simply just change your name and that's it once you hit save, you can send that link to anyone in the entire world and you'll be able to talk to them, which is pretty cool. And it's just easy, guys. That's how to make and publish your very own real-time chat using Firebase and Nellify. And of course, I had to make one too. And my URL is rhymbo-memechat.netlify.com. You guys should check it out. Drop a comment on there, which would be pretty cool. That would, that would be insane if you guys dropped a comment on there. But basically, that's it. You guys could share your links down below. Maybe you customized them, made it better. Let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, this is, this is, really, this is a really cool website. I really liked it. And of course, that's it, guys. Until next time, rhyme below.